Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to enable uh, Sonar Cube to work pipeline. Okay. So Sonar Cube would be um, another tool we're going to add here, and ideally it will receive uh, and scan our repository for uh, all sorts of things, but namely. Um, static errors or code smells um, will perform some sort of security analysis on it and the 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 good part of it right is it's fairly easy to set up it will give you uh, a much uh, more quality to the overall project you are building, right? And so to get your hands started, right? Uh, just navigate to the Sonar Cube, uh, choose the version, namely 9.6. And here you have two ways of, of setting this up, right? You either set it up like a normal installation in your, in your instance, or you can just use the server uh, that they bundle here with Docker, right? This is just for um, testing purposes, so it's not production grade, but still it will give you a, a, a very nice idea of all the features it contains. Uh, SonarCube is a server client architecture, right? So you need to deploy the server first in order to enable things to be shipped with Okay, so in my Linux instance, I already have it running, right? So here we have Sonar Cube. The way to get this started is just run this command here, docker run. It will start our server container. And after you have your server container, you can access it, right, in the port 9000 with admin, admin. I already done the first setup, right? So this is my IP, port 9000. And this is the first project or the project we are working currently, right? Uh, how to get to this point, right? How to make that our first uh, project appears here? Uh, whenever you start Sonar Cube, after you, you made the, the first access, you're gonna be able to create the first project, right? And SonarCube is, is smart enough to understand that you, you have other options, right? You have from Azure DevOps, from Bitbucket, from GitHub, but because we are using GitLab, uh, this would be the optimal form. It all boils down to, we just need a token, right? And then with that token, we're gonna run sonar scanner binary against our repository and because it has the token because it has the endpoint of the sonar cube that uh, analysis will will reach the sonar cube server uh, the steps are like this you just have to follow them like in order right uh, the first connection you make is it asks what is the gitlab url the GitLab URL is this one, right? And it access for uh, access token, right? So if you go to your profile, you can create access tokens here. Uh, access tokens are just um, short-lived tokens that you specify which kind of access um, the, the Sonar Cube or any other tooling will have, right? In my case, I created the Sonar Cube with all the possible scopes, right? And I got this token and put it here in Sonar Cube. After that, uh, Sonar Cube is able to see all the, the, the repositories, right? Um, the the after after you enable Sonar Cube to reach the the repositories in GitLab there's only one more thing to perform right you have to create a sonar project properties right 
this will be the project key sonar EQ server will give you right and the other thing is you have to go to your GitLab CI and place the step to run Sonar Cube. Again, it will use a different image, Sonar Scanner CLI. You could also create your own Docker image with the Sonar Scanner CLI and run this ad hoc. No problem there. I'm defining which tag, so just so the sonar cube knows where to run this and i'm defining for which uh, branch I, I want this to to run this is useful when you don't actually want to run a set of jobs to every single uh, branch okay so after you have all this setting set up right what will happen is because you added a new stage to your pipeline, if you navigate to your pipeline, you're gonna see here Sonar Cube. And Sonar Cube will just perform the Sonar Scanner, right? It will read your repository and it will upload this to the server that we have here, right? Uh, bottom line is, every single pipeline right you're gonna have uh, a new report showing if you have bugs if you have vulnerabilities if there are any security concerns and if there is any technical depth any code smell right so it will try to score your code here and this will give you an, a nice view of where you should fix issues or are issues that are supposed to be fixed or not, right? So clicking here on secured hotspots, it will not only tell you the line of the error, but also what is why this is, is, is a problem, right? So you can see here what is the risk, assess the risk, and how can I fix it, right? So Sonar Kibi will give you all of this out of the box for you, right? It will match all the files and show you what is wrong, what you can do to prevent it, and so on. It's an invaluable tool for every single pipeline you might have. Okay. It will also give you the technical depth of it, which is amazing if you really think about it. It's uh, telling you what is wrong with those lines, right? So not covered by tests not covered by tests and therefore you would be able to once you have this report and create a new either a new pull request to fix those or a new story to actually you know try to remove a little bit of the technical depth you have the code smells you have and also verify in the bug section what is what is happening there right uh, it, it works with most of the languages, right? So this one, it's can for Python, but it can also work for PHP, Java, and so on. And well, that was it for today. It was just a short intro how to enable uh, Sonar Cube to the pipeline. Ideally, if you want to go with the production uh, uh, Sonar Cube, right? You will not want to use the container image because it comes with the embedded database, right? And well, you can imagine that this is not like uh, optimal to retrieve many jobs. So here it works with only one, which is good. But imagine if you had like 100, 200 uh, repository shipping uh, Sonar Cube uh, scans, right? Eventually, this this is gonna operate. So there are other ways of running this, right? And the other way would be to running um, in the instance and then connecting to a database. Cool. I see you guys in the next one. Thank you.